Welcome back, everybody. Hopefully you got that Ask Him correct. We're going to start getting into the hot tags of the week, different rumors, stories, news, and anything else that we need to run down for the week uh, for uh, professional wrestling. And uh, let's start off with just a simple kind of thing right here. Did you guys watch that Legends with JBL show? Quite like nope. half of nope, it. not yet. Man, I tried watching it. Not a fan. Was the first one with Eric Bischoff? Yeah, it was a little, it was a little dry. Very, very dry. I mean, we've had, like, the Stone Cold podcasts, and we've had the Jericho ones, and it's sort of similar. I mean, it's just an interview thing. You know, nothing special or whatever like that, but JBL is not the most char charismatic host. Now, I'm not saying that I am, but uh, his questions and what they were asking, too, and stuff, I couldn't get into this. I fell asleep, and I was laying down for a couple hours and not able to fall asleep, and this did it. <laughs> they were talking about like song, you know well let's talk about Vern Gagne a whole lot and I'm like oh god like I, I don't <laughs> like that kind of stuff and if you are a fan of it you know go check it out hats off to you you probably will love it but when you start hearing about like what Bischoff was he's talking to this executive and they're going over this thing and Mid-South is whatever it's so boring to me and I just wanted to get into like the Monday Night Wars you know so I don't know if that happens in the, the later half, and this is only part one, right? Yep. So it better fucking happen in part two, at the very least. If we're, like, starting off part two, all right, guys, well, where we left off? 1991, now you're interviewing a fucking broom, and... <laughs> <laughs> Not a big fan of that. Um, was it a 30-minute show, or was it an hour long? It was an hour. An hour. Uh, I don't know how long I got into it before I fell asleep, but... It couldn't have been the more than 20 minutes. The commercial they showed on TV for it, they had, like, multiple... They showed, like, multiple guests, so I just assumed that it was either, like, small, like, 10, 15-minute interviews with an hour-long show, but, man, good luck with that, Tony. Well, okay. I, I think that it could be the guest, too. I mean, Eric Bischoff is, like, an old man now, and he was just sitting there with his old man suit on, <laughs> with his old man tie. With his old man hair. And his old man's skin. <laughs> no, that's Jericho. His old man voice. I'm excited for the Ron Simmons one. I think that'll be cool. Because at the very least, we know that those guys have, like, good chemistry together, that they are really good friends. They've probably got, like, tons of, like, inside jokes and shit. Mm. So, you know, I'll give it probably a shot. Probably a lot shot. of good stories, too. Yeah, like some road stories and stuff. I'll watch it again. I'll probably try to finish this Eric Bischoff one, because maybe there's a little nugget of something interesting that I didn't hear yet or whatever, but um, you know, from what I did see, I wouldn't recommend it to a lot of people. Go ahead, check it out if you want. Leave a comments below. Tell us what you think about it. they got another podcast coming up soon, though. Brock Lesnar is going to be on the Stone Cold podcast. You guys excited for that? Did not know about that up until now, so that one should be interesting because, you know, Lesnar has made a few words, but I guarantee you Austin's going to have a lot to talk to him about, so I'm interested in it. Uh, correction on that. Brock Lesnar is... Brock Lesnar's a very uh, few... Uh, well, a man very... I can't even fucking say it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Wago's Sorry, a man of very that. disjointed words. <laughs> Thank you. He actually does speak quite a lot when he's in an interview setting, but when he's Brock Lesnar the Beast coming out on stage, he lets Heyman do the talking. So I think this is going to catch people by surprise, and I think it's going to be a really intriguing conversation. Well, this is a WWE uh, broadcast, so you never know if they're all, they're going to try to pipe him things, to say himself. So it'll be interesting. You think Austin's going to be in that character that he was pulling at the end of the uh, Paul Heyman one the whole time? No, nah, I think this is going to be really mellow. Put on that Nobody hat with the uh, Edge and Christian one. I mean, if they were going to set up the match, this would be the time and place to do it. Uh, it's a possibility, because uh, we're getting Brock Lesnar versus Undertaker a hell in a cell. That means the likelihood that Taker and Lesnar at WrestleMania has pretty much gone out the window. I mean, it's still a possibility. Could happen. But now it, I would say... What are you going to do after less. a hell in a cell? Right. You can't just be like, okay, well now we're going to do double hell in a cell. <laughs> like, I was just about to suggest just, double hell in a cell, just as a gag. From there, just Maybe like a reverse cell. hell in a cell? Three stages of hell in a cell? <laughs> do a Punjabi prison where it's Wait, a a hell in a cell hell in inside of a, an elimination chamber inside of a punjabi prison a reverse hell in a cell is where the floor is a cage and oh. the top is open 
Wouldn't it be gonna, heaven in a cell? Because I, because I was going to say, if they're trying to escape into the cage, they already did that. Yeah, that is true. They have done that in advance. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, Brock Lesnar is going to have to have somebody else to fight at WrestleMania. <laughs> and we're running out of people that he can fight that'll be a big match. Like, he's already had Roman Reigns. He's already had John Cena, Triple H, Undertaker. I can't imagine Brock Lesnar versus somebody like Sheamus or Randy Orton or... Sure, you could do those matches. You can do those. You got The Rock. Kevin Owens. Oh, yeah, there's The Rock. Kevin thing. Owens. Yeah, oh, a lot of Owens Rock matches great. left. I could even say a Cesaro if you built him up enough. Daniel Bryan if he's healthy enough. Oh, they would go with Bryan if they had a chance, probably. Mm hmm. Damn, now I want that to happen. <laughs> yeah, well, we might see something about that. Stone Cold's mentioned in the past that he might be interested in doing another run. So, it'll be interesting to see if they do set something up here. Well, last time he had an interview recently with uh, Chael Sonnen, Chael brought it up and he went, I think you're just bullshitting. I think you're going back at WrestleMania and Austin just flat out denied it and tried to move the conversation along. If you so either he's Austin, working or I don't know. If you see Austin on these specials he's been doing lately, he's been looking like he's been bulking up a bit. And I gotta imagine if he is going to wrestle, obviously it's going to be a WrestleMania. And, well, you know, he spends like a year to get himself really in good shape. Could work. Uh, then again, maybe this Sting thing is going to shake him. That's true. So let's tie that kind of in together um, with another thing, another story that's going on here. Sting, uh, possible career-ending injury at Night of Champions. Ric Flair has said that he wants to get back into the ring. When did they tell these guys no? <laughs> well, they told, Rick, they told Ric Flair no. Yeah. He won't go away. It's like, Flair, you can't wrestle anymore. I'm gonna go to TNA. I'm actually getting uncomfortable seeing Ric Flair. Uh-huh. Like, when he came out and he cut that promo about Charlotte, even just the way that he was speaking sounded like he had had a stroke or something. And maybe he was just, like, you know, really emotional because he's been crying, like, you know... They they show like a picture of Charlotte on stage and he just starts bawling like for some reason Ric Flair he can bleed like a stuck pig and he can cry like a river, but I don't know he the way he doesn't look that great he looks better than a lot of other people at his age I'm you know sure he's not on oxygen and shit but Flair is not somebody I want to see back in the ring he's just gonna get killed and Sting. I mean, this guy took a couple bumps at Night of Champions, and his career might be over in, what, three matches in WWE, and that's it? You ask, when's the time to say no more? It's when this happens. You know, you can't really predict when your body's going to go out. It just does. You've got so many bumps in your bump card, and then it goes kaput. Shame that it came so, too, so soon for Sting. There's still... He's been wrestling for God knows how long now. He's still in ring shape, so it's not like that he has been taking time off and not staying in shape for the most part. He knows what he's doing out there. It's not, with Ric Flair, it hasn't been doing much for the past few years, so it'd be quite scared for him. He might just like do a freaking take a suplex. He might break his back or something. With Flair will fucking bone. So Flair will never get. Flair will never die. The son of a bitch survived a plane He'll crash. Live forever. <laughs> like he survived a plane crash. All that happened is he just got smaller. Yeah, so with Sting, I mean, there's it was an attraction for him, so I understood why they still have him around. I mean, so Flair, there's no attraction, so hopefully he stays out of whatever ring he plans on, you know, getting in. Yeah, I don't see any positive to Ric Flair getting in the ring. I don't see a whole lot of positives to Sting wrestling in any kind of, like, really, you know, crazy style or any, like, uh, hardcore matches or anything like that. Like, Man, I, all these old fucks wanting to get back in the ring and we can't get Shawn Michaels. This. Fucking, I'd kill for Shawn to come back. Instead we get fucking Sting. Kurt Angle just show up. As long as he doesn't do any like... moonsaults, I'm okay with Kurt coming back, but fuck. <laughs> Uh, Sting and uh, Ric Flair. Like, Ric Flair should have retired a long time ago, right around the time he started wearing t-shirts in WCW. 
Yeah, I think when you get to the fat kid in the pool that doesn't want to take the shirt off stage, like uh, Tommy Dreamer was doing that and stuff. Okay, Kevin. Tommy Owens, Dreamer did that his guy, entire career. They retire now. Yeah. He did? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought he wore like... Uh... Well, he started as a the pretty boy, but then... Yeah, he had the suspenders for like a year. Hmm. But he was wearing t-shirts really soon. Yeah, he adapted to this uh, persona in ECW of him just being the pretty boy that got the snot kicked out of him. And following that, he got a cult following and just started wearing the ECW colors. Weird to think of Tommy Dreamer as the pretty boy. Yeah. He wasn't actually a bad think of his name, name, Tommy Dreamer. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't strike me as like a Tyler Breeze or something, you know what I mean? Well, he, he actually looked, looked, he looked, 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 looked the, Yeah, he looked the part when he was younger. I mean, look at Shawn Michaels now. Is there anything sexy about him? It's kind of like the cockeyed eye. Yeah, he's just this cockeyed, <laughs> balding guy gyrating on the side of a ring. <laughs> I think I'm cute. You might think so, Sean. <laughs> I think I'm cute. Nobody else does. <laughs> so speaking of Night of Champions from the whole Sting situation, we had another weird thing happen that night. Of course, we had some other weird things and stuff like that, but something in particular. A fan tried to get into the ring. Actually, he did get into the ring. Yeah, he stood just, there just, posed next to uh, Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns, and he's getting 10 days in jail for it. They actually went through with charging him. He pled guilty to it, of course. And the reports all said that if he would have gone to trial and they would have, like, dragged it out or whatever, he could have gotten, like, over a year in jail. So obviously he made the right choice. Just like, I did it. I mean, there's any fucking doubt that he did it? <laughs> Video no, there, there was there. an imposter uh, right. guy. There was photos of him in a flak jacket staring at Roman like inches away from it. And there are still people that are like, no, that was this referee guy. <laughs> Yeah, fucking, you know, Chad Patton goes in the fucking ring, or John Cone, or whatever. Uh, you know, I think that, obviously, WWE wanted to make an example of this guy. Do you think that this is a good enough example that's been made, or do you guys think that this is just going to be like, ha, huh, that's funny, he got ten days, but I'm going to do it again? Because this has been happening a lot lately. Something's they, up. They need to sit the boys down, go, if a fan jumps in the ring with you, you fucking tag them. Yeah, Simple. I was thinking the same thing. And then they open themselves have... up to lawsuits. No, they don't. I mean, no, any yeah. judge in their right mind would be like, okay, you jumped into the ring, you're trespassing, you open that up for yourself. Like, they wouldn't, you know, get sued and lose and stuff, but at the same time, that just makes it a little bit more uh, of a situation than they need to deal with. It's still they litigation have... fees they have to put on, they have right. to put their lawyers to work on it. They gotta have that wrestler that did that to show up and testify. And, and, and listen, if their lawyers are concerned with that, then how can they keep concerned with taking Tony's channel down? Yeah, that's true. I think it would actually benefit any wrestler that did tag somebody publicly. Make them look also, I stronger. think. Also, you know what it would do? So, um, Vince would get a fucking boner for it because he's always talking. You remember how he fucking hated John Morrison because he didn't think he could win a real fight? <laughs> I guarantee you, a wrestler tags somebody that comes in the ring, he's getting a push. Surprised that Kevin Owens hasn't done it yet. Then, well, well, even just, better, he attacked Machine Gun there. Kelly. This because no, no the reason no one runs in on Kevin Owens is because they think he's a fan that dropped the ring. <laughs> and to be honest, all the recent ones too has been uh, Shield related guys. So I don't know if this is just you know people gawking this, for them. I was dressed like a Shield guy. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, credit board. to this guy. He at least dressed a gimmick. You think the security, like, were just too dumb and thought he was a legitimate fan? Like, sorry, legitimate wrestler? I don't know, because what's funny about the video of it, if you go back and look, Luke Harper and Braun Strowman don't even do anything. They're just looking at this guy, they're just kind of like, oh, dude's in the ring. Hey, dude. Like, just imagine if Strowman got his fucking hands on him. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> you got a lot of brass balls getting in the ring with those guys in the ring. Imagine how, since they're on the opposite ends of the ring, and this guy poses next to Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns, and they turn around and they're like, oh, wait, what's happening? Imagine if fucking Braun Strowman just, like, charged at the fucker. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, fuck. Str- Strowman would fucking kill them. Oh, uh, you know what you're worried about, lawsuits? You fucking just, like, have Roman sit on the guy while Dean Ambrose gives him a pink belly in front of everybody. Problem solved. Humiliate the guy. It'll work. 
It's the part where you moved the segment along, Tony. <laughs> I was just, like, processing the idea of Dean Ambrose doing that. He'd probably love it way too much. Yeah, he would. <laughs> Sitting there going, like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Give him a fucking wet willy. And a <laughs> swirly. Give him a wedgie. Why is that it? <laughs> yeah, and a Tom. Put wedgie. his underwear over his head. Calls out Ryback, and he's like, Ryback, you know any good bullying techniques? <laughs> what else we got here? You've got Lucha Underground is going to be returning for a second season. I still haven't even checked out a single full match, let alone a full episode, let alone the first season. But Holy I've heard fuck. good things about it. So Go watch Vampiro's match against uh, Peyton. What's the dude's name again? It was the fucking hardcore match they had. It was brutal as all hell. Pentagon Jr. There we go. I watched that um, the other day that popped up, and man, they tore the house down. Hats off to Vampiro. He That's can still amazing. go. That that's actually a contender for batch of the year for me right now. Really, it does, it mm -hmm. does go to show that violence does go a long way. I'm not saying you have to fill your entire product with it, but it adds something when you use it at the right times. What did, what's the details of this? Is it going to be on El Ray again, or do they get another um, yeah. network to sign? Yeah, El Ray's got it um, again, so they must have come to some deal, which I'm really glad because. Um, I've got that network, so now I don't have to worry about losing a chance of viewing it. We're having to try to find it online somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, I'm really happy for the guys. They deserve a second season, and fucking hats off to them. They're the only alternative out there. Now, despite not checking it out, I'm happy about them getting another season, too, because from what I have seen, it's something different. Seems like they've got some talented guys. And... I don't hear anything, like, horrible about the company. Like, we are going to get into in a second, TNA. You know, that's a company that needs to die and bring out, like, the ashes of that need to make a better company. Lucha Underground doesn't seem like they've got any issues, really, so... Well, the Vampiro has been going out publicly on many occasions and talking about certain guys not wanting to take jobs, so... Um, and I think he... I think it might have been Alberto he was referencing. I'm not too sure, but there's people that are upset with some of the backstage antics going on. I could see Del Rio doing that. Uh, well, you could see Del Rio doing any, anything negative, though. Especially because Del Rio's become such like a big shot everywhere else he's gone. Uh, he probably thinks that he's entitled to just like win everything. Well, that's what Vampiro's whole oh. thing was. He said this guy is a big guy normally, and when he comes here, he doesn't want to do the job for guys. He doing the parents, so... Absolutely sounds like Del Rio. Cause I could, it would either be him... Jomo, or uh, you know who else it might actually be? Was uh, Big Zeke. Could he was be involved Big in Lucha Underground? Yeah, Big Zeke he had was. a big role. Um, he's a fuck, apparently he's a fucking asshole in real life. Yeah, but so. did you notice he got phased out by the last show? So I bet he had some bad attitudes and they just got rid of him. Could be. Uh, uh, so he yeah. literally is a big guy. Mm -hmm. Has Mysterio popped up on there yet? Uh, they teased him on the last special. It's it's not actually 100% if it even was meant to be him. They had, like, a guy put on a mask, and he, like, spray-painted a question mark onto the side of a building in Los Angeles. So it's it's easy to think it would be him, but Might maybe it's Kenny. Mysterion. Yeah. <laughs> this... <laughs> I like that we both wanted the same joke. <laughs> oh, so, uh, have they said when the season's going to start up? Because uh, they, they've recorded these in advance, right? So well, they haven't recorded the second season yet. Mm. I suppose asking. I didn't know if like how long far in advance it is, or when is the season? Does it have, a, does it have an air date? Uh, I don't remember coming across one. Mm. It is going to be in the first quarter of 2016. If uh, El Rey didn't, uh, you know, buy a second season from him, do you think that they could have possibly gone to Netflix? Uh, I don't know. People are rallying for it, but it depends if Netflix even is interested in the pro wrestling business. I That's a weird wrestling, business to get into. I don't think wrestling is very adaptive to the Netflix model either. Because Netflix is big on binge shows, where you could throw up a whole season and it's cool. And wrestling is a week-to-week -week thing. What I will say, if out of all the wrestling promotions, though, Lucha Underground would be the most suited. Yeah, because it's the most cinematic. Mm-hmm. So you it's know what? Kind of like you, I don't really imagine like a sports thing working out with Netflix. And if you advertise it as sports, then that's weird for the next Netflix crowd. And if you advertise it as a TV show, then they're going to be like, "Wait a minute, well, this is kind of sports." Like, I don't think that it would fit. 
but you never know. And they don't have to worry about it now. So <laughs> there you go. Very true. Well, they sh- actually, they still might be pursuing something like that. Cause I know one of the problems was, is that a show like Lucha Underground has a very high budget uh, because of the, the cinematography and the effects that they use. Like, you know, people have died in this show. People like vaporize and take off on jetpacks into the air. Like all types of wild shit happen in this. Um, jetpacks? So- yeah, dude, this is an insane show, like, on some of this stuff. It's it's unlike any other wrestling thing you've ever watched. Um, so it's got a very, very high budget, and that was one of the reasons why there were so many questions whether they're going to do this second season is because El Rey is a very small-time cable network. So they're, they're not going to be able to really pay for it, uh, even though they have the backing of Robert Rodriguez, who's, you know, willing to filter in enough money to keep it alive to a certain point. Um, I know they're still trying to find more money elsewhere, either via distribution through something like Netflix or Hulu, or uh, I know they were really trying to get on something like Univision, which would be huge if they can get on that. See, I don't know anything about Univision, so I can't really it's, um, have an opinion about that. It's basically the number one Spanish-speaking channel in the United States. Oh, that's why I don't know anything about it. <laughs> Uh, Those channels to me are like, can't I just not have these and get some money back on my Comcast bill? I think they also broadcast throughout Mexico too, though. So if they got on that channel, they basically would have international distribution, um, and that would make them like major, major, Damn powerful. Yeah, like they they would. You know, people like argued about whether WWE was number one worldwide. They actually might become competition for them worldwide if they got that kind of deal. Who knows? Maybe they'll get it. Maybe second season is one of those things where more people tune in. Maybe they'll get a little bit of a boost up in their um, recognizability and stuff like that. And if that's the case, then, you know, all the success to Lucha Underground. I'll probably have to try to figure out a way to uh, check that out pretty soon. Beginning of uh, 2016, that's when it's coming out? Mm-hmm. Cool. So I got a little bit of time. So I mentioned before we need to talk a little bit about how shitty TNA is doing. Yes. And... Uh, <laughs> We had a situation here with Destination America dropping TNA. Um, Impact's been dropped from international stations as well. And on top of that, they're going to be pursuing Scott Steiner in their legal troubles again. What did he do? They're claiming that he breached contract by saying disparaging remarks about them. Mm. And he's basically saying, bullshit, not in my contract that I can't talk about you guys. So one of them's right, one of them's wrong. I don't know who to believe because they're both sides are like ridiculous. Seems like a pretty easy thing to solve. Show his contract. Yeah, <laughs> it's either there or it's not. But apparently that's going to trial in February, and TNA's not going to probably have a TV show around that time. So they're going to be wrapped up in that. And what are they going to do for money? Here's the thing, they've got so much it's negativity a- on them, I'd love to see them prove him wrong. Like, <laughs> any of these claims, please prove me wrong. I think they're just at the point that where they're trying to get money in any way possible, so... I'm gonna try to bleed Scott Steiner dry? Yeah, might as oh, well. Go try the- Sorry, go on. No, they'll probably bleed anyone dry who was previously in the company, and they could have said something about him that was negative like or anything of that nature, so who knows? Well, I think the majority of the things that he was bitching and complaining about are about people that aren't even in TNA anymore. Bischoff, Hogan, etc. Are you talking about, like, when he went on this Twitter shoot like, two years ago? Yep. They're still butthurt about that. Really? They're claiming that that ended up hurting their business. No, it just made Scott Steiner look ten times better, so... They might have a point with that. I don't think anybody at this point would be like, you know, I was going to give that TNA a shot, but Scott Steiner said that Hulk Hogan sucks, and <laughs> fuck that company. No. TNA's See, done more than enough damage on their own. This is probably one of the few times where Scott Steiner said something that was like, yeah, you're probably right, Scotty. So, he's probably, don't, he's probably read about all that stuff, too. I've got a good defense for Steiner when he gets to court. What? What? I thought this is America. <laughs> Got my peaks on peaks. So there was something about TNA dropping, what was it, like 100,000 viewers or something? Uh, Yeah, that's right. They've been dropping significantly each week, but 100,000 is huge for them especially. Like, WWE can lose that to um, 
some type of sporting event and bounce back like when it's over. But TNA, they're just dropping because they suck. If you lose 100,000 viewers, how many do you have left? Five? Well, they're they're negative uh, one million now, so. I mean, like, we shit on TNA all the time, and it's fun. But at the same time, like, you gotta reach a point, again, like we were saying with the Ric Flair and Sting and stuff like that, when do you just give the fuck up? Clearly, TNA is... The people that are involved, whether it's Dixie or her circle of people or whatever, they're still harping on this idea. They were arguing with somebody on Twitter. I can't remember who it was. They were pointing out, like, the terrible gates that they've been doing recently. Like, they had some show where they were giving tickets away, and it still was only a couple hundred people. And the guy was just kind of like, oh, everybody wants us to fail, but we got surprising things coming. It's always pay attention to what's coming up next. And that next thing never ends up doing a goddamn thing. Boy who cried wolf, as far as I'm concerned. Agree, disagree? Fuck. Pretty much said it all. They're never getting better. They've had more opportunities than anyone. They've been on life support for God knows how long. People have been saying since 2008 that they're going to go out of business, yet they've hung on. And true, those uh, notions were a bit silly and over the top, but as it's gotten to the Hogan and Bischoff era, there was a time where they should have just gone out of business. I'm shocked that they got Destination America to agree to have them on the station, but just in typical TNA fashion, they upset them constantly, repeatedly. What a fucking terrible company. And the tragic part is all the people that worked for that company, because... They had a lot of talented guys. Now it's just the dregs that are left that they can afford. And for the few that actually do have something to offer, it's being wasted. You know how I feel bad for in this situation? Ethan Carter. I think him going to TNA is going to be the best thing that ever happened to him. He's one of the few people that are going to benefit from that company. Well, but he's got a huge, huge upgrade from being there. But if he doesn't leave soon, he's going to be the guy that didn't leave before the company got, you know, disbanded. No, so was a, that was AJ Styles. I know he left before it disbanded, but fuck, he's wasted too many years there. Well, weren't there reports that like, WWE was interested in getting him back? Or something There's like that? reports. I mean, one of the current rumors right now is that Carlito's coming back. Like, And MVP. And someone else. And, and Sean else. Benjamin. Yeah. And Matt Hardy. It always realizes there's a lot of people around that, like, 07 range that people talk about. Chris Masters, MVP, Morrison, like... Still not sure why they fucking got rid of Masters the last time. He was doing really well, but whatever. Nah, I wasn't that bit of a fan. No. Oh, no, now we got to do Superstar scores, Chris Masters! <laughs> Alright, well, at least he gets a really good score for uh, physique. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, he, after he got deflated... Uh, Wait, yeah. That's true. He would get, like, one with an asterisk or something. Let's move on from TNA. Let's talk about a better organization, NXT. Tickets for NXT TakeOver London have sold out already. And uh, when we were trying to figure out some stuff for the hot tags earlier on this week, we were looking up some different things, and two other stories came out on top of that that deal with NXT. One was that there's a little dispute going on with NXT talents not being paid for these special shows that they're doing. And there was another one about the four horsewomen of NXT, Bailey, Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte, not being in WWE 2K16. However, if you really, really want to play with those uh, divas in the game, we got Cameron. <laughs> thinks that this is a good idea. Who in WWE 2K16 was sitting there going we got a limited amount of people here so let's have like eight versions of these different people and ugh, crap we're running out of spots. We only have a couple divas. Uh, Cameron and like Rosa fucking <laughs> come on. I don't think so that last come on. Here you go. No, I said you. You gotta go. <laughs> I said yeah. I said you go first. So you go. He's not you go. He's Wigo. Yeah. So you go first. Steven, oh well then. Go. Oh, I guess I will. Anyways, when it comes to the uh, 
video game reports. I I'm hesitant to believe that they're actually doing that. A part of me believes that they're they're just saying this to get the reaction, get news, get some buzz about the game, and then they'll put them in eventually. So I'm not going to buy into that until the game is officially released if, or and stuff of that nature. But I don't know, man. It's uh, it's a pretty fucked up stuff, you know. When I'm playing video games, I'm definitely looking to get the divas. So I'm not going to get the video game regardless. So and for those of you who are complaining about it, just don't buy the game. It's simple. If they don't put them in, and it's you're really that butthurt about it, despite the fact that they have everyone else that you pro- probably will want. Don't buy the game. It is that simple. I have never played with the Divas on any WWE game other than when I've accidentally gone on an online session and he put me in a Divas match. (laughs) So outside of that, I have never, ever wrestled a Divas match and I never, ever will. I think it sucks for the people. I think it sucks for the Divas who are working their asses off. But the reality of it is they're not appealing to the bigger demographic. So if they want a roster spot, go out there and fucking earn it. I will say a couple of things. Uh, the one time I played with the uh, Divas in games, it's probably when they had like the brown panty match stuff. Because <laughs> he wanted to see something. Yep, exactly. <laughs> 12 but, year old Drew sitting there going, oh man, I hope there's that code. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, uh, oh man, have you seen it, all her ones and zeros? <laughs> it's the, the reason why I say that, you know, I don't believe it mainly because Sasha Banks even posted about how. She, you know, did the face scanning stuff and all and everything of that nature. Mm-hmm. So it's I'm hard. It's hard for me to believe that they would have her go through all that stuff and not put her in the game, especially when she is one of the biggest stars they have when it comes to the whole women's division as of right now. So uh, it'll, it'll be interesting going forward. But I, I I'll still go with that. Uh, they'll all be in the game, so everyone needs to calm their tits. Peyton, you were going to jump in there a second ago. What, what was that for? No, Drew had something way more important to say. <laughs> Damn right it was. Yeah, how's way you going to say that they have to go out there and earn it? These are the four women that have gone out there and earned it. That's why people are upset. Because these women have gone out there and kick ass. And meanwhile, you do have women in there like Cameron and all of the others. There's a technical explanation for this. And it's the fact that these women were in NXT at the time this game was majorly being developed. Uh, and they do have a lot of NXT talent, but it's mostly the men. They didn't really put any focus on the NXT Divas. So I can understand if they didn't have these women and they had, like, Dana Brooke. That, that would be, be a gross exaggeration. <laughs> of, like, if they did that, it would be fucking ridiculous. But they only have the main roster Divas and a few of the Legends. I, I fully believe these will be, come out as DLC. If not DLC, then, of course, you can get as somebody's creator wrestler. Mm-hmm. But who the hell's playing it anyway? Like... I read this article where they were complaining, oh, do we really need all three faces of Foley? Yeah! I want to have a triple threat match with all three faces of Foley against each other. That seems a lot more fun than doing anything with uh, Cameron or Dana Brooke or, shit, Curtis Axel and whatever. Or any of the four horsewomen. Hence why they get a spot and they don't. And I mean, this is from the perspective of somebody who doesn't play these games. To me, uh, when Drew was saying, you know, don't don't buy the game if you... If, or butthurt about it or whatever, I look at this as kind of like, I'm an outsider enough that I don't even see the point of buying this game every year anyway. Can there really be that many differences that justify spending, what, 60 bucks or something for this game again? If you don't play it, like, often enough, then you're really getting the use out of it? I look it's, at like a uh, Madden game or whatever. I haven't played a Madden game in God knows how long. But yeah. that to me is like, shit, you just bought... 2K15 or whatever, you've been playing that for a couple months, 2K16 comes out, you're like, I gotta get it. Uh, well, there's 60 bucks down the drain or whatever. Are they really that different that justifies it? No, not know. that it justifies it, but I always get it, and I always play it personally, so if it gives me several months of enjoyment, then what, that's worth my money. What do you money. say justifies it? I mean, there's like single-player experience games that you pay the full game price for that are like four or five hours long. Yeah, well, those two. I mean, I I don't get that either. But well, everybody's value of a dollar is different, so it is yeah. what it is. Well, I'm just from somebody who doesn't play these games. To me, that always was weird. So I wanted to get you guys' uh, thoughts on that. Because what I went through, the last system that I ever had was PlayStation Two, and that was when I started to like rent games, beat them in a couple days, and then I was like, oh, I don't need to buy them anymore. Whereas like Super Nintendo, I'd buy a game like a you know Super Mario World, and I would play that shit for weeks. And not get done the game. 
and I really got my use out of that. But I'd get like, you know, Amazing Spider-Man. Well, that wasn't Amazing Spider-Man. It was Ultimate Spider-Man or whatever. Beat did it, you like, did days. you not get done that too? What uh, Ultimate Spider-Man? I was taking the piss out of you. You, you said a <laughs> sentence funny. <laughs> <laughs> Like well, when you generally, were to... these new games that come out every year have enough there that it can be considered worth it. Uh, you get your updated roster. They usually have some new kind of gimmick they put into it. Like I remember one year, the big gimmick for the SmackDown vs. Raw was tag team wrestling. They invented, they put in all these new tag team wrestling moves and mechanics to work around and then that. Took that was like the hot tag and stuff, right? Yeah, then they took them out because... Fuck, well, because yeah. it wasn't the gimmick of any of those other games. It was only the gimmick for that one. That's what made that one special. You know That's what, what make all these games good? Different. If they kept the features and expanded. Is I it? think it's a thing to make each one special each year. Um, and something else they've been doing to make it special each year is they've been doing these um, story modes, which are almost like single-player campaigns. So you're getting those fresh every year on the new one every year as well. The and ones that are, are like kind of dated by the time they come out. Well, sense. they're they're retro, like they're based back on past the storylines now. That's the whole point. Like this one's going to be about Stone Cold. The other one were about several feuds, Triple H and Shawn Michaels, which was kind of let down considering you couldn't have the triple threat match. But whatever. Oh, that's right. Or would you like replace somebody in there? And what was really awkward too is. Um, You've got CM Punk and John Cena as the other one, and CM Punk had just left the company, and there was all this bad blood. <laughs> so what do you guys think about that other topic that I mentioned here, the NXT talents, the pay for what they do on the special shows? I think you worded that a little weird, saying they don't get paid, because they do get paid. Not getting paid extra. for the They don't, they don't get the, the, the bonus, bonus. Yeah. which I think makes a lot of sense. I mean, they, they got to make some of their money back for making this farm league and giving it the full production value and everything they do for it. That That's the place that they do it. I mean, most of these NXT shows, I don't even think they charge, I don't think they charge entry for anything at the full sale, including the takeover specials. Really? They are wrestling independent shows with a guaranteed contract. Like, how many guys on the indies would fucking love that? These guys are in a really good screw. So, and they have access to an unlimited wealth of knowledge that, again, anybody on the Indies would love to have. They don't, the have to, they don't have to pay for their gym. If they want to try some new moves out in a ring, they've got several. They've got a place they can cut a fucking promo and air it to the guys in the head office to see if it's good. Yeah, acting they, classes. They've got so much at their disposal where if you're getting guaranteed money on top of this and you're complaining, go fuck yourself. I would side more with WWE on it. Because it makes sense to me, like, if they're going to do these as just live shows, and then they go, hey, why don't we air it on the network? Well, you know what? You were still just going to wrestle a live show. And I think a lot of people have also been bitchy because it's guys that have earned their keep in, like, big pro, like, New Japan and such. My attitude to that is, you didn't earn your keep in WWE. And I think a lot of people are probably upset about this because it's NXT. Yep. It's like, if this that. was main event superstars, people would be like, oh, who fucking cares? If this was OVW, people wouldn't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it might also have to do with the uh, Brooklyn show and how, like, you know, it was such a big deal for that. that maybe they just thought that, you know, they deserve some of what the whole thing was. No, it's people just bitching about something they don't fucking understand. And because people like the bitch. Hmm? And because they want to bitch in support of the NXT guys. And, you know. Uh, at the same point, I do admit I see a little bit of the other side. NXT TakeOver London's in December, and they've sold out already. So you would think that the people would be like, hey, if we're doing this damn well, kick a little bit of money back to us and whatever. But You know, that NXT happens works, when you get promoted. Yeah, but if NXT is really operating at a loss, then WWE shouldn't have to do that, and maybe they can't afford to do it. It doesn't even matter if there was, like, working at a profit. I don't care. They're a business. They're meant to make money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, suck on that, fans. <laughs> yeah, fuck you guys. So this has been a wide range of topics for the Hot Tags this week, and hopefully you guys enjoyed that. So leave your comments below. Tell us what you think about all these different stories, whether you agree with us or uh, disagree with us. Watching all over the place here. Uh, we need to take a little bit of a break, though, and we're going to come back with that rest hold, and afterward we're going to get into our main event of the evening, which is Superstar Scores Chris Jericho. So stay tuned. Click on Part 3 
follow all the information that I'm going to give you there. Check out that Did You Know parody in the comment of the week and whatnot. And we'll see you there. So uh, go ahead and start clicking.